So we are very happy and thrilled at Universe in a Kiss to be talking with the amazing, wondrous, brilliant, articulate, and funny. I got them all in. Yes. There could be more, who there knows? There might be, but let's leave the rest out. Dr. Lawrence Krauss, who is a cosmologist, theoretical physicist, particle physicist, host of his own Origins podcast, and that's a foundation as well, and author of numerous books. Excellent. I am not a scientist. Really? <laughs> I am a lovist and well, an good. artist. Uh -huh. I see everything through a filter of love. So that's why we are here. Mm -hmm because I've tried to connect all the amazing truth in science, which is just amazing on its own. It, re it really is. Absolutely. And I try to connect it to love and consciousness. Okay. So is it within the realm of possibility that we are attracted to some people and not other people? Because maybe we shared atoms that were together and then blasted apart and then together in all those billion blasts that take place in a second? No. Oh. <laughs> no, okay. but not, I mean, that's, that's not likely. But let me just turn it into something that is real, um, okay. which is that we all share atoms. Every time you breathe in, you're breathing in at least probably a, a dozen atoms from the dying breath of Julius Caesar when he said, et tu Brutus. And in fact, every time you breathe in, you're probably breathing in atoms that have been breathed by almost every human that's ever lived. So I mean, isn't so that you are, amazing? So you are part Julius Caesar, you're part, pick your favorite people, your least favorite people, they're all part of you. All of those atoms uh, uh, get e exchanged regularly. And so the notion that we're separate is really an illusion. I love that. Me too. Okay. You think we can compare love to gravity? Well, in, a, in an allegorical sense, that gravity is always attractive and so is love. Right. Until love stops and then it's repulsive, I guess. Well, what if gravity but, stops, though? Once you have mass it, you can, it, it all, and energy, there's always gravity. There's always a, all objects that we know of, all matter and energy is gravitationally attracted. What is interesting is that there's a kind of energy that's gravitationally repulsive. And that's, that's the energy of empty space. Empty space has energy, we don't understand why. The dominant energy in the universe resides in empty space. If you take a right. bit of space, get rid of all the particles and radiation, so there's nothing there, it still weighs something. But one thing we know, due to the laws of general relativity, is if you put energy in empty space, it's gravitationally repulsive. So it's actually causing the expansion of our universe to speed up over time. And it's changed virtually everything we think about cosmology. Well, can't, maybe we can change everything we think about love, too, because we think we know some things about love, uh -huh. which we do, the chemical reactions yeah. and the dopamine and all yeah, that, that, what goes on yeah. in your brain. But there's an exceptional kind of energy that occurs. So it is nice to think of love as sort of universally attractive, which it is. and. Um, and, uh, but, the, there's a, the, but there are differences. Let me give you a difference, okay? okay. Gravity, the strength of gravity Bring it falls. On. Yeah, okay. the strength of gravity falls off with distance, but the strength of love doesn't. In fact, um, one might say it even grows with separation. Since we're made of the same stuff of stars, We've made perhaps the same stuff. our behaviors can emulate those of stars. Mm, no, we made it, our, our physical behaviors do. The, law, the processes that govern what happens in your body are the are the same in some sense the same processes that happen in the stars but behavior is at a very different level of existence but the neat thing about physics is on different scales you see different kind of phenomena but it's very different than the kind of behavior on the scale of stars or galaxies where really gravity is the only force operating the, the force that governs almost everything that governs the way you live, right. your love, your hate, your food, everything you do, is a force called electromagnetism. That governs chemistry. All of chemistry is governed by something called electromagnetism. Gravity is irrelevant on human scales, but on the scale of stars, gravity is everything. Oh. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah, I uh, didn't know that. Electromagnetism is love. Well, in a sense, yes, because electromagnetism is love. There's equal opposite charges, right. there's attraction, repulsion. In a sense, it's a much better analogy.
But it's also actually true. You can't understand love in terms of just electromagnetism. That you, you can, Precisely. You, it's, it's got a whole layer of complexity beyond that, that it produces eventually a complex structure that somehow is self-aware for reasons we don't yet understand. And that is responsible for, I was going to say the eternal mystery of love, but it may not be an eternal mystery. We may understand. We may figure it out. We may figure it out. Understanding. Makes the, it better. Yes. Understanding what makes a rainbow a rainbow doesn't make it less beautiful. No. It makes it more beautiful.